so it begins. An epic story of mankind, inspired by real events. Are you ready? And bring restitution and relief happening on every dimension. But I am sustaining restitution and relief. And there'll be a case. Greetings to you in the precious name of Jesus Christ. Uh, I'm so excited and grateful uh, for this privilege and opportunity for us to be together. Uh, my name is Walter Turner, Jr. I'm the senior pastor at Grace Congregational Church, and we're located in Houston, Texas, and we'd like to encourage you that if you're ever in our area, please come by and share with us in a time of study, a time of prayer, or a time of worship. Uh, if you'll go to our webpage, gracecongregationalchurch.org, you can find um, the exact address, the exact times of our services, uh, days, uh, some of the basic things that are fundamental to our faith and our belief here at Grace. And uh, you'll get to see some of the things that we do. We try to post various events and we try to make sure that uh, uh, the things that God is doing in that place, um, we broadcast it. We broadcast it because uh, I'm a firm believer that we as believers in the church do not do a good enough job celebrating the great things that God has done and is doing in our midst. I make it a point to try to always uh, bring testimonies of, of things that God does uh, in the lives of his people. Uh, the people there at Grace know that if they tell me, hey, pastor, you know, this week the Lord did this and so-and-so happened and, and God moved. And as I said, you know, you have to tell it. You have to tell the people that's so important. Uh, bad news travels so fast. I often say if there was some scandal or some um, devious thing that had transpired, boy, it would spread like wildfire. Everybody would know it and everyone would be talking about it. And then the good things, the things that God does, the things that only God can do, um, you know, we're reluctant. It, 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 it travels by snail mail, you know, uh, might as well be going by the horse and buggy, you know, that kind of thing. And so, so I make it a point to put it out there. And so what we do is try to let everyone know that God is alive and he is working in the earth and he is working in his people that trust him and obey him. He is doing great things. So listen, why don't you come and share and be a part of that. Experience that for yourself. Um, see what the Lord will do in that place. Bring your praise, bring your worship, and let it blend with ours so that our great God will minister to us, will, will meet all of our needs, and there will be a manifested presence of God in the midst of his people. And so um, we're looking forward to that. If you will call us, we'll pray with you. We'll you have, have questions. I've answered questions that people have, have had in regards to some of the things that we teach, why we say what we say. Have any, don't have any problem with that. Um, we're here to help. We're here to share what God has freely given to us. We freely share it with those that would inquire. So uh, take the time to call us, to come by and see us and I want to thank those of you who have already taken the time to come, and some are still coming, and so we're, we're grateful. Uh, we pray that the Spirit of God is what draws you uh, and settles you in the place that God wants you to be in. So, uh, again, thank you, and come on out. We've got plenty of room. We, we'd love to have you, and, uh, and to God be the glory. Uh, today I want to talk about... <clears throat> The church and us as believers, uh, just uh, the previous one of the previous programs or the one uh, right in front of this one, we talked about the idea of building better relationships, about really impacting our culture, really stepping out, really uh, touching lives and, and not just being, uh, uh, you know, the church folks who hide behind the walls. And so today I want to 
I want to kind of follow up on that or, or give part, part B to that. And so if you would, if you'll turn in your Bibles, if you have them, I, I'd like to just use one, one verse. It's, it's found in Acts chapter 10, uh, and it's verse 38. It's verse 38. And so it just simply reads, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And so what I want to talk to us about in, is, is, is us as be believers getting out of those four walls, uh, taking it to the streets, getting, getting really engaged and involved in our culture, really uh, touching lives, reaching out to people, not necessarily waiting for them to come to us, but going to them. You know, the Bible says that when Jesus is making his declaration with Peter about the church, he says, upon this rock, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Well, in that analogy, gates do not move. Gates are, are designed to uh, give access in and out, but also to prevent uh, people or something from entering in. And so he says that the gates will not prevail against the church. It is the church that is moving. It is the church that is the aggressor. And so um, we need to be busy as chaotic as we say things are, as backwards as it seems to be. That ought to compel us even more so to be aggressive in engaging our culture and our people for the cause of Christ. And so we need, we need to not be satisfied that we have church meetings, that we're just there. There, there, there are very limited times that we're at the building and more times when we're out engaging our culture, when we're out reaching out, when we're out touching lives, that's really what the church has been designed to do. And so one of the things is, is that many times you often hear us say, I want to be like Jesus. I want to be like Jesus. Well, Let's read all of the characteristics and all of the things that Jesus really did. Well, one of the things that you notice is um, he was uh, a people person. And what I mean by a people person is not a people pleaser in the sense of trying to get along, get, get, go along just to get along or to appease everybody but he was a people person in this sense of always being where people needed what he knew he could give. He was always with the people. He was always with those who needed him most. You know, if you walk into a room and the room has 20 lights and you hit the switch and the lights come on, is, <clears throat> is it a necessity to, to put another light in that room? It, it, what value would another light bring to a room that has 20 lights? That light would be better served in an area where there is no light that light would be more effective, shining even brighter and brighter in a place of darkness. You put it in the room with the other 20 lights, you might not even notice it's there. And so many times 
what we're doing, if we're not careful, we're becoming religious. And, and, every, and all of our efforts and everything that we do is about us being at the church, being at the building. Mind you, listen to me carefully. You do need to be together. I am not talking about being a renegade either, okay? I'm not talking about uh, being the Lone Ranger. And I, no, the Bible says, do not forsake the assembling of yourselves together. And I, I am emphatically uh, promoting that. But there are times that we should be together and those are established. Let me just use this. Let me use Grace Church since I, that's where I pastor and that's the order that I'm familiar with because that's what God has given us. We have Bible classes on Tuesday night. Then we have prayer on Thursday and then we have our worship service on Sabbath morning. All of the other things that the saints of God do there, those are, as I say, ex extracurricular things. If you're in the choir, that's your choice. You, you make up, you, you de determine that. And so you come for the essentials and you come to be equipped so that those other times you need to be engaging, I need to be engaging, I need to be out busy sharing what I have received when I come to services, to Bible class, what I have been empowered to do when I come out of prayer. Prayer is not something that we use to hide. Prayer is an empowerment tool. And so why am I getting all this information? Why is God uh, feeding me? Why is God empowering me if I'm never going to go out and use it, never going to do anything with it? The word of God, food in the natural sense, Food is fuel for your body. It, it, when you are, are nourished, your body has energy, and now it's able to walk. It's able to talk. It's able, you're able to stretch out your hand. You're able to lift. You're able to do all of the things that you need your body to do. Well, it's the same way with the Word of God. When you are fed the Word of God, when you, when you really come to the Bible classes and, and God speaks to your heart, all of that is not for you to just sit around and talk about how much you know. That's fuel for your spirit man to be energized to go out and to do the things that God would have you do in this culture. And so we've got to learn, and I'm promoting, and I, I push, I'm, I'm big, and I, the saints know it. I said, man, let's take it to the streets. Let's do something with it. And again, just putting another light in a room that already has 20 lights does no good. It, it doesn't have any real effectiveness. We have to get into the dark places. We must be courageous enough to minister and to share we talk about how great God is in us, how powerful he is, but, we, but the only time we talk about that is when we're in the confines of the church. We never demonstrate that uh, to that brother or sister who's, who's, who's down and discouraged. We never break those spirits of, of suicide and all of those kinds of things that are holding people captive. Exert that power to free someone. That's what this text says about Jesus. Religion will get you stuck. Religion will get you uh, being pious. And when I say religion, I'm talking about just going through the word religious or religion just simply means having a habit of doing something. And so you have a habit of going to church. You have a habit of going to Bible class. You have a habit of going to prayer. That's religious. But when you go and you know that's for equipping you, that's for preparing you, and you take what you learn and you apply it and work it and, and use it as tools of reconciliation and demonstration uh, in the lives of people who don't know, then you're doing what God and what uh, the Father really has in mind for you couple of things there. You know, in Ephesians, it talks about how God gave these gifts 
this five-fold ministry uh, to the church. And the purpose of giving those gifts was for the edification of the body of Christ, the church, so that it could do the work of the ministry. Well, that ministry is reconciliation. That ministry is doing what Jesus did right here. He went around doing good and healing the sick. And brothers and sisters, you and I that are filled uh, with the Holy Spirit, baptized in the name of Jesus, then we have in us, we have the same God in this Jesus, the Christ is in us, and he wants to do the same things that he did through this Jesus, the Christ, through you. Put your name there. God wants to do through you, your name, my name. He wants to do through Walter Turner Jr. the same things that he did through Jesus the Christ. And so we must wake up to that and, and, and be about our father's business. Take, get out of, you, you know what? There is such great joy that you will experience when you allow God to work through you for someone else. I can't, I can't tell you the degree of joy and gladness when you are being used by God and God is working through you for the benefit of someone else. When you see someone else delivered, when you see someone else um, really just brought to life and that light of hope comes on in them again. There's, I tell you, it, money can't buy that. And so we've got to get out of our four walls. We've got to get out into the highways and the byways. And I know that there are some of you all, you say, oh, no, that's not me. I, oh, no. There are some folks, I like to say it this way, there are some folks, you can do the hardcore witnessing. You can do the hardcore deliverance. You can go and, 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 and sit at the bus stop. You can deal with those who are uh, really destitute and, and, and somewhat seem to be um, cast, a, cast aside and, 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 and just pushed away in our culture. I got that. But there is a place where every one of us can actually minister. And so those of you that say, well, I, I, I don't go street witnessing, quote unquote, yeah, but you don't witness in the grocery store either. How about that? When do you open your mouth? When do you uh, talk about the grace of God? When do you engage anyone about the saving grace of Jesus the Christ and what God is able to do in their life? You can be on the playground. You can be at work. You can be sitting in the doctor's office. When do you? That's the question. If you don't do it here, then my next question to you is, when do you do it? Where do you do it? Where do you share? Where do you allow God to minister to, through you to do something good for someone else? Where, where do you cast out the devil? And so in this text, it is, it, is, it is wonderful how the scripture says that Jesus went around doing good. He didn't limit himself to just being there at the church. He didn't, he didn't just uh, praise God and, and declare God's greatness at the church. As a matter of fact, he brought greater, greater recognition, greater worthiness and and, and praise to God by taking God's presence and grace and power to darkness, to where people thought God couldn't be, demonstrating it in an area in which they said, surely God is not there, but he brought light to darkness. And the people who were captivated by that darkness greatly rejoice. That's why they loved him so. And that's why the church and the church folks, the religious folks hated him so. 
because what he did was he brought light to darkness. He, he had the people who needed the help. He had them receive the help that they only could get from God while the religious folks talked about God never hears sinners. You know, we need, to, we need to read our Bible. We need to really read it carefully and not just read it from uh, preconceived ideas and old preached philosophies that we've heard over the years. The people who are saying that are the religious folks, and they're saying that from the context of trying to validate their righteousness. If God doesn't hear sinners, how did you get saved? How did I get saved? I'll tell you how. When I cried out to God in my sin, he heard me and delivered me. And so come on, brothers and sisters, let's take it to the streets. Let's, let's get out of there. Let's get out of there. Let's get out of our comfort zone. Let's, let's get out of just going through the motions, being religious. Go to Bible study. Go home. Go to prayer, go home. Go to worship, go home. We go to the stores, we go places, but we never engage the, the people, the culture that we're in. We shun away from things that seem controversial. Well, you and I, we're supposed to be the peacekeepers. We're supposed to be the ones who bring about solutions how? Through God. God working through us brings the answers, brings relief. And we go around and we do just as Jesus did. Take it to the streets. Take it to the streets. Get out of that comfort zone. I often uh, challenge the church there. I uh, always remind them. And I asked them this question, when's the last time you told someone uh, about your faith? When's the last time you shared a conversation with someone about what God has done in your life? You know, one of the things that I love doing as I move about is simply greeting people. I can't tell you how many doors that has opened for sharing the gospel, telling people uh, that God is still sovereign and does what only God can do simply by just greeting people. It is amazing. What I find is, is that many times people are shocked that people still say, hello, how are you today? And it's like their first, their, their first thought is, wait a minute, what? Oh, wow. Oh. And then they say, oh, oh, he's saying hello. Oh, okay. And then they respond back. Something as simple as that. Doing good, doing good, and healing. Jesus went around doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Listen, the reason you and I have been saved and filled with the Holy Spirit is not just to shout and to emote. In Acts chapter 1, he says, You will receive power. Ability, might, efficiency. For what? Not just to go to church, go home. Go to church, go home. Go to church, go home. I don't, that's a routine. There's not much power needed to just fall into a routine. But when I begin, you begin to engage in this demonic, perverted culture, we need power to liberate those who are being oppressed by the devil. What people are calling mental illness and all of those things, a great deal of that is demonic. And so they don't, they don't always need medication, they need deliverance. And we need the power of the Holy Spirit. And that's why God has baptized us to heal I mean whole, bring wholeness in all facets to people's lives. But we've got to believe that. We, we've got to know that. Um, we've we got to know that we're 
those agents by which God is doing that now. Not just the preacher, not just the, the, the special person at the church building, but you as a believer, you as one who, who has been baptized in the name of Jesus, filled with the Holy Spirit and are walking according to God's word, you are now charged with the power of God. God is with you. See, that's how Jesus, and that's how this text ends, by saying the things that God was, that Jesus was doing, going around doing good, healing the sick, delivering those who were oppressed of the devil, he was doing that and able to do that, the last clause says, because God was with him. Is God with you? Is God with me? Do, do I know that? Do I believe that? Is that true? Then if it is, then we too can go around, do good, heal those that are sick, deliver those who are being oppressed of the devil. I want us to understand that. That, that, that we, we, we allow sometimes too much to slide. We allow the, the, the enemy to get away with too much simply because we aren't engaging. We won't take it to it. You know, sometimes you got to take the fight to your enemy. You can't always wait on, on your enemy to throw the first punch. That sounds real noble, but this is, this, this is, this is, this is a dirty fight. This, this lives, souls are on the line. And we must win, and we've got to do what we have to do. And so there's, there's no chivalry in this. There's no, no nobility in this. He is, and all of us know someone who has been touched, afflicted, oppressed in some manner. I mean, in our own families. And to sit by and just watch it happen when God has empowered us to be the difference makers. Come on, church. Take it to the streets. Shalom. And so it begins. An epic story of mankind inspired by real events. Are you ready? And bring restitution and relief. Happen in every dimension when I am sustained restitution and relief and there'll be a case